Hello everyone, this is uh, Shad Reis from Heart Trendy. Today we're going to talk about pulmonary embolism. So what is the pulmonary embolism? When you say uh, pulmonary means this is something related to the lung and embolism coming from the word embolus means a clot or a blockage. But when this uh, clot kind of block the way to the uh, blood supply going to the lung, it's called pulmonary embolism. So what are the causes for pulmonary embolism? The pulmonary embolism comes from um, usually a clot that develops in the lower extremities or upper extremity, but most of the time coming from lower extremity, mainly the legs, called, uh, from something called DVT or deep venous thrombosis. DVT usually is a clot developed in the, in the legs and eventually kind of breaks off and f travels to the lung, causing that pulmonary embolism and blockage in the pulmonary artery blood supply. So who are the patients who are usually at risk for blood clots or pulmonary embolism? Patients who are at risk for pulmonary embolism are patients who have history of cancer, or patients who have family history of blood clotting, or patients who have been having taking uh, oral contraceptives for a long period of time, patient on chemotherapy, or patient who have recent surgery. What I mean by recent surgery, being in the hospital for a while, being sick with pneumonia or after renal, renal replacement or a hip replacement, usually these patients are be in uh, kind of in beds, not moving as much as they are before the surgery uh, or the hospitalization, and therefore they're creating kind of stasis or stagnation in the blood that is in the leg, eventually leading to a clot in the leg that travels to the lung. So what are the symptoms for pulmonary embolism? Pulmonary embolism uh, symptoms are a big spectrum of uh, symptoms. Can be um, as simple as some shortness of breath, palpitation, you feel the heart is racing. But sometimes if the clot is big enough, causing compromising the blood flow that going to the lung, it really can cause kind of what's called dizziness, lightheadedness, and some people passing out as well. If it is in severe cases, and when it's a really big, uh, big uh, sometimes causing the patient to collapse, and what's called cardiac arrest, or patient sometimes don't make it and die from that blood clot. I know majority of the audience that are hearing me now have some or reflect uh, on some of the stories in their uh, family members or loved one had blood clots before, either in the legs or in the lungs, or really died with a blood clot in the past. So how we can prevent blood clots in the legs or eventually blood clots in the lung. So how we can prevent that? So usually when we get and admit the patient to the hospital, usually we give them what's called sub-Q or subcutaneous heparin. This is a small dose of heparin just to make the blood thin enough, but not too thin, but not thick enough to cause a blood clot. This is for a patient admitted to the hospital for whatever reason, as I mentioned earlier, pneumonia, um, cellulitis, um, a COPD or asthma or knee or hip replacement or any kind of surgery. Also patients who have uh, admitted for cancer therapy or patients who are at risk for cancer and uh, DVT from cancer itself or from chemotherapy should be on a small dose anticoagulation to prevent that blood clots. The clots always sometimes uh, develop because patients have a long trip like traveling in a car for a long distance, five, six, 12, 15 hours, or also long flights, anything beyond three or four hours flight. Also because you are sitting in that chair for a while, creating that kind of uh, stasis in the legs and that clot can develop and eventually when you go stand up and move, this clot will dislodge and travel to the lung. So that's why we encourage patients who are going on a long flight or long ride to have a break, frequent breaks and take a walk. What I mean by that in that when you are driving, meaning stopping at the gas station, take a few laps around the car or go to the store, come back a few times, just to make sure you, uh, you encourage and you are augmenting your circulation. When you are on the plane, also we recommend the patient to take a few laps in the hallways, going to the bathroom and back or going to the back and coming forward. This is kind of to improve the circulation so you are not sitting for a long period of time. Patients who have also clots before, they should be encouraged to be on more active and also do these exercises regularly as they are on a long trip. So how we treat pulmonary embolism? Pulmonary embolism treated in number one with anticoagulation. So we'll give visually both thinners when the patient admitted to the hospital through the IV or injection under the skin. 
but eventually this patient will go on a pill. The medication that we use in the past were like warfarin, which is an old medication for blood thinner that require you to monitor what's called the INR. But in recent years, we have a newer agent such as the apixaban or rivaroxaban or what's called Eliquis and Zeralto. These are medication that is given to the patient usually in the range from four to six months just to make sure that this clot is dissolved and gone. This is for patients who have first time blood clots. If you or anybody have more than one blood clot or one clot after the first one, then we have to study this patient to see is this individual is at risk for what's called more blood clots in the future or they have coagulopathy or problem with clotting in their bloodstream. This can be hereditary or can be an acquired causes for us. But sometimes if the patient comes with a big blood clot, we usually go with a catheter and go in and usually we suction this clot and take it out. So to relieve that obstruction because this way these clots are big enough and the medication wouldn't work as much. Eventually the patient would be requiring to be on this medication before discharging home and be on it when they go home. But if these clots are big enough, causing stress on the heart, causing the heart to work harder, heart to work faster, the lungs are not breathing and compromising your oxygenation, then there is an indication for going after that clot and taking it out with a catheter. Mm -hmm. Finally, what do you how do you prevent or how, what are the symptoms of you having uh, blood clots or how do you alert yourself or your loved one having blood clots? If you have any leg swelling, for example, one side bigger than the other or sometimes both sides leg swelling can be a problem which is a prodrome for you developing blood clot that's why when you come and evaluate yourself usually we start with ultrasound for anybody with leg swelling to make sure this is not a blood clotting issue before we assume other causes I will link also the video in the description below for our leg swelling video that has been description of what are the causes for leg swelling Finally, I would like to thank you and be healthy and also for this holiday season people are traveling a lot So please make sure you be active you move around and be as uh, Mobile and moving around as much as possible when you are traveling on the road or on you are on the long trip on the plane Thank you for watching. This is Shadi Reyes from Heart Trending